Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dark Cloud. Oh my goodness gracious. We're getting closer, one step closer every episode towards the end in the gallery of time. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, apparently these are 25 floors that we have to go through as we surge our way back 400 years to the day when the Dark Genie first awoke. Or was it when he first awoke? Or was it when, um... I guess he was set free after, like, all that craziness was saying. Also, did you guys notice that there's specifically only 15 enemies on each floor? What the heck? Is that just pure luck, or is that actually always supposed to be the case? That is weird. Oh, also, someone also asked, uh, and it was a very good question. I totally forgot to mention this, but... In the final levels, at least in the North American version, I cannot say for the Japanese version of the game, uh, in, the, in these final levels, even though there are secret rooms, unfortunately, the Emily version, the original PS2 version, and this version on PS4 uh, are all bugged. There is no way to get the item that you need. I think it's like the flapping dust duster or something like that. Sadly, it does not work. You'd have to cheat it into the game, and I don't even know like where to begin to do that unless it's like the emulated version, then you can like hack it in or use cheat codes or something like that. But yeah, unfortunately, we won't be able to see the back room here unless somehow it unbugs, but it's, you know, it's a 0% chance. I've never, ever, ever had it work for me. Unfortunate, I know, but it is the way of things. Maybe we'll get lucky. Uh, speaking of lucky, I would very much like to see a, a weapon drop for us. Like anything that's half decent, you know? Anything that drops, like a bonus item. Oh, nice. I right, got the clock hand, sweet. Oh, didn't mean to pause it there. But uh, yeah, I want to get a weapon that has like, you know, the vampiric ability that gives me health back on kill or regen or whatever. Just anything. Uh, or, you know, increase thirst. Uh, or not increase thirst, but decrease thirst. Uh, just nice little perks to throw onto our random little guy here. Our big bucks hammer at the moment. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, is actually go into my items. Take a look at our gear, because I might actually have too many items on Tone. Okay, good. We have at least one space on Tone, three spaces on Chow, two spaces on Goro, and infinity spaces on the rest of these nerds. Okay, sweet. Ungaga has a weapon, apparently, that could give him instant death on hit. It's a low chance, but imagine giving it to, you know who, Mr. Osmond himself, who with, like, a one-hitting weapon, like a one-damage-hitting weapon, he could potentially kill any enemy in the game. I'm not sure if the weapon... Or if the, if the ability actually works on bosses. I think someone mentioned it before in a previous video, but I can't say for sure. But I <laughs> would be very much happy to check. Uh, or to know if that even is a thing. I bet speedrunners would be, like, losing their shit, though, if they got a random a random thing. I saw a speedrun recently. Well, I didn't, I didn't actually watch it, but I saw it on YouTube just loaded up into my recommended and it was like an eight hour speed run of the game and I was like huh interesting I would love to do like a speed run of Dark Cloud but I wouldn't even know where to begin I'll be honest I mean we wouldn't need any defensive weapons or defensive items rather so you can skip out on all of that and you wouldn't need to do any village completion other than the bare minimum so I would have to like write down what we need immediately and it's not really like you can map out a route too much like, your route mapping would just be, like, where to put down all of the buildings real quick in the most, like, optimized fashion possible. I guess. I don't know. I'm just intrigued. I'm not a speedrunner, although I do like to dabble every now and again by watching other speedrunners and uh, see what they do and then try and recreate it. I basically... I'm like the... When it comes to speedrunning, I'm like the person that reads the Wikipedia page. <laughs> and I'm like... I'll copy this for my high school project. The teacher will never know. <laughs> you know, something like that. It's like, it's the most fun. Oh yeah, damn it, okay. Wait, what did I try and put in there? The clock? I know I have the key, there it is. The pitch dark key. Black key with weird air of darkness. There's like air that goes over it. Oh my God, he's Naruto running at me, Jesus. Freaking Rash Dasher. These monsters, they're crazy. Oh my god, there's so many fish. Oh shit. 
the dank flowers. Yeah, we're living the dream really right now. Honestly, this this entire run, this entire let's play has been a, has been a blast. I've been loving it from beginning to end. Everyone helping out with it. Us all coming together as a nice little community to uh, to play through this beloved title. And I'm so happy to hear that so many people have similar feelings towards the Dark Cloud series that I do. It is uh, it's a wonderful little JRPG dungeon crawler type game. Every time you play it, it feels infinitely replayable to me. And I highly recommend it to everyone that has been watching it. If you haven't been playing recently, or if you're interested in trying it out, and you have like a PlayStation 4, or if you have your old PS2 version, uh, and you have a decent enough PC, then you can emulate it, no problem. Thankfully, uh, PS2 emulation is like some of the best. I think PS2 and P PSP, I was about to say PPS, PP, which is, uh, for one, it's it's just a ploy to make you say PP twice, because god damn it, emulators, why do you have to name your things weird? Uh, but those two, like the PSP emulation and PS2 emulation is some of the best on PC, and of course all the Nintendo stuff, but I mean, Nintendo will just crack down on everyone on YouTube, I swear. I think they finally let up though, didn't they? Not to go too crazy into the whole Nintendo YouTube uh, market, but you know. Uh, a lot of people don't like doing Nintendo games because they... Nintendo for the longest time... Now, I don't think they do this anymore. I think they actually got rid of this plan, which is, thank God for that. But if you did Let's Plays, you'd have to sign up with the Nintendo, like, creator plan or whatever it was to play any of their games. It doesn't matter if it's new or old, like, if it's from a billion years ago. If you wanted to play any of their games, they'd have to get a cut. And, like, already... <laughs> I already make no money on this, goddammit. You're, you're trying to take zero dollars from me? Are you serious? <laughs> Uh, I don't really care too much about the money, but from what little I make, I'm like, I'm already making pennies here, man. I'm just trying to, to pay for my internet by playing video games. That's the most fun. If you ever wonder where the money from the ad, from the one ad per video that I do goes to, it's for my phone and for my internet, and then that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's the month worth of pay. I know, it's pretty sad, right? But I don't know. It gives me an excuse to play video games, though, and I actually freaking love video games, so goddamn. If it, if it helps pay for something in my life, then that's that's good for me. Good enough for me, damn it. That's the honest truth. I was like, what, what is the, what's the meme going around on right now? That's it. That's the tweet. <laughs> I always... I love that tweet. It's my favorite. That's it. That's the tweet. Especially when it's made entire, entirely an irony to make fun of the tweet. God damn it. Yeah, there you go. That's that's the hard truth. Where does where does all the ad revenue go? Oh, it goes directly into my internet. <laughs> man, man makes videos on the internet so then he can pay for internet. <laughs> oh shit! I'm killing myself. It's too funny. <laughs> it's sad, but it's so true. It's too true. Oh, all right, what is with the fishing bait in this? Oh my goodness, dude. In this entire run, we have gotten like infinity fishing bait. Even the game wants that fishing episode coming out soon. Damn. I haven't even recorded it yet. Like I said, I'm saving it for like the, the moment we put all the pieces together of the story. Because that way we'll have basically all the bait you can possibly get up to that point. I say you can possibly get by, you know, we could possibly get by not farming, I guess you could say. Oh my gosh. So many mimics, so little time. Uh, there we go. Bloop. Fort. Got a fort. I hope it's made of pillows. Just adorable, adorable pillows. I'm still waiting for those uh, those dungeons where they're gonna be like, all right, use Ungaga, and I'm like, oh god, please. I really hope there's nothing like that. But uh, knowing this game, if I, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a bad game design. I think it's great. It's to tell you like, hey, you should probably have these other characters. But I, I do I do agree with my previous statement of saying like. Make us do it once, and then remove the limited zone forever. 
Or, oh my god, I just thought of a genius idea. Okay, you know how the skull system works in, like, Halo games and shit like that? You know, like, you use a skull and it either makes the game easier or harder? What if they made it? So, you could, like, make a dungeon harder or easier, and it would adjust... Not only, like, say the app, but maybe each one would give, like, a different buff. So, like, if you put in a certain uh, element that gives enemies, like, double HP, then you'll get double abs if you kill them and stuff like that. Wouldn't that be great for farming? And, oh, man, it just made the variety of the game so much better. Shit, I want to I make a mod. I wish I could make... I wish I was savvy and I knew how to do this shit, because uh, I doubt it's even possible to really implement it into the game, but... Shit, dude. I need to do it. Also, my weapon upgraded and I was going into my inventory because I got so excited. I was like, whoa, dude. Sitting back like, dude, bro, what if like bonuses were given to you, bro? Bro, bro, that's totally like lit, dude. Uh, I don't, I don't feel like we need any of these, but I'm just going to upgrade them anyway. Upgrado. Wait, hold on. Yeah, upgrade. Just to clean out a little bit of the elements, if you will. Bup, bup, bup. I apologize for the Osmond only gameplay, but he's my favorite character, and I and fight me, fight me. <laughs> Osmond's my favorite character. Fight me. I'm not, I can't play anyone else. Goro, Goro is uh has changed my opinion on him fully in this playthrough. I used to be on team no Goro, no time. Never, never Goro, never ever. Uh, during this playthrough, but I've seen the light, and I and I totally I put Goro down as the ultimate warrior for melee. He is uh, <laughs> Goro hammer times his way into Smash. I'm on that side of the team. Um, <laughs> it's true though. Like I, I'm just really shocked with how good Goro is. He is truly, in my eyes, Goro the legend, Goro the god. He is just perfect. <laughs> In every way, with the, the crazy iframes that he gets. I want to say he gets a solid, like, two to three seconds of iframes, maybe even longer. It, it's the full animation, too. It's just, it's dirty, man. Dirty trickery. And, uh, speaking of speedruns earlier, like, if I, once I get Goro, I think Goro would be my go-to, maybe. I don't know. Or Chow. Actually, Chow probably would be great for speedruns, because she can just, like, I don't know, speed kill all the enemies, right? So, I don't know. Shit, I kind of want to do a speed run, even though I'm not that good. And also, eight hours is a lot of time. <laughs> I'm going based off someone that probably already had a pre-made run. It wasn't world record or anything, but just seeing the glimpse of a speed run being eight hours for this game, and I'm just like, Jesus. I can't believe it. Although the fun that comes with this game is all the randomization and the weirdness like that, right? It's kind of funny, like... Both this game and Diablo, which both kind of share the same time slot, are both basically action RPGs. They're both ARPGs. They're both uh, randomized dungeons and all that shit. It's just uh, the difference is this one obviously goes down the right uh, route of a Japanese RPG with weird stats and shit. And then Diablo goes down the American RPG, which has infinite enemies. Although then there's Dynasty Warriors, which also has infinite enemies, so there's that. But I guess it's more of just an action game than an RPG. Shit. I don't even know. Blood Agreement. Oh my god, that's totally metal. There's a lot of crazy shit that's gonna go down in the story. Once we once we start getting to it, it's, it gets real. It gets real real. There's gonna be a lot of it. I'm excited. I'm excited to check it out. It's been a while. It's been a while since I even got this far in the game. A lot of the time, if I'm playing on my own time, I'll like go through Naroon Village and then I'll probably stop playing. Not that I dislike Matataki or going through the rest of the game, but I get everything I need out of Narun Village. I get the, the city building, which is awesome. Narun is still, like, the best village for building villages in this game, in my opinion. I do wish that all the other towns got just as much love or just as so much creativity out of them. I think, um, although Dark Hog 2, in a lot of ways, you'll see it as we play through that game as well. Um, they tried to fix... I say fix, but, you know, they try and make it a lot more organic with what, how you build the towns. So, it's both more of a nuisance to build the towns, and also 
you get a lot more freedom to build the other towns. A nuisance in that you need materials as opposed to just going through and grabbing at Lamelia. In Dark Cloud 2, you get these little geo stones, which are one stone instead of like 10 at Lamelia per map, it's one geo stone. And then that gives you a blueprint, and then you need the materials to build things for those blueprints, right? This isn't really spoilers, I'm not going into that, but uh, it's more so just a comparison between the town building. But the, the thing that makes it annoying is you need those materials. And those materials are on a thing that you go to, you go to a shopkeep, shopkeep has materials, you go buy the materials, and then bada bing, bada boom, you can make all your freaking buildings. And the thing about it, you can make essentially infinite buildings. I think towns are limited by a number, so the game doesn't run at like 5 FPS when you're done with the thing, but the freedom of building is much greater than this game. But at the same time, this game's towns feel much different. They're a lot more unique to the area that you're in. Then again, they are pretty unique to the... Oh god, it's so difficult. It's so difficult for me to like go into it. Because I don't know, there's things I like about Dark Cloud 2's building, which is the freedom that you get. Damn it. That's uh, holy. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess when we start playing Dark Cloud 2, I can really dive into it better because it's still it's a game I haven't played in a while so maybe my opinion on it is gonna change as we go along I'm pretty sure it's holy right holy holy moly oh shit why did I change the tone them reflexes yo I still feel like the ruby doors are my least favorite doors because he, uh, just the fact that you have to switch your dang element around really eats into my pacing, man. <laughs> you know, I wish, though, I wish you could play uh, Dark Cloud 2 with the Japanese settings, but I don't think you can on PS4. And also, since we're doing a Let's Play, I don't know, I feel like it's better to go for English. Anyway, I think. I really like a lot of the voice actors that are in... in the English dub too, though? Like, they have Paul Eiding. Because, of course, Paul Eiding was in literally every video game back in the day, dude. He's also in Diablo 2, which we're playing on the channel, and then he's also... He was also in Diablo 1. He's also one of the characters of Diablo 2, isn't he? He's like, um... A super god dude person. As as he would be. Oh, I lost my drown spell. That's what it was. I'm so distracted about what I'm talking about, but I'm just having too much fun talking. I don't know. It's what I like to do. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing to do. Are these... Let's... Oh, uh, yeah, that's not how Drown's Feathers work. Let's make the time go by faster by using your Drown's Feather. Just fluff the... Fluff it with the feather. Alright, go forward. Yeah, Paul Eiding's in, uh, is in the sequel of this game. He's really good. A lot of voice acting in that game, so... Unfortunately, all my... All my quality... <laughs> my quote unquote high-quality voice acting is gonna go... Out, of, out the window. Unfortunate. I know. Uh, I think there's still a ton of characters in that game that aren't voiced, so I don't know. Maybe I'll do just the standard voicing that I do in, like, Final Fantasy VII, where it's unedited voice acting. <laughs> Dark Cloud 2, I think, is a bigger game than this one, so it would take forever for me to render those videos out. And the, the way I do it, and the truth of the matter is, you know... I'm I'm as lazy as it gets when it comes to trying to make videos. Let's be real. Oh, but the majority of Let's Plays I do right now are unedited. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, I like I like what what I like to call uh, live edit. So like Final Fantasy VII Remake, I have a fade in, and I have uh, I'm sorry, I have an intro video, and then it goes into the video where it fades nicely. And then I have, Jesus, the max HP on this weapon is crazy. And then, like, at the end of the Final Fantasy VII Remake videos, it fades out nicely. And that's all through Open Broadcaster and making pre-rendered videos before it starts and after and all that. Whoops. Um, and it still looks like an edited video that still looks really good, that I'm really liking it. Also, I can pause the videos at any time, so that'll be my cuts. Like, it's great. It's, it's really nice for Let's Plays. <clears throat> Especially in the old fashion, right? Because the new fashion of Let's Plays these days is, like, heavily edited, and sure... Oh god, please. And sure, those are definitely very entertaining. Like, don't get me wrong, I I'll... I'll run across, like, a Markiplier video, or, like, a... a, a PewDiePie doesn't really do anything anymore, does he? He just does vlogs. Um, 
Oh my god, who else? Who else makes video guy video games? Video videos? I can't tell. I don't know, everyone does edited Let's Plays now. And I totally get it. And I totally agree with it. Because it's like, that's the way... If you want, if you want views, you do an edited Let's Play, right? Is that, is that the plan? Is that what you do? Just make like a 10 minute, one second long, heavily edited Let's Play. Super cut, right? And then, and then, uh, and then you basically let the YouTube Autobot put as many ads as possible in those 10 minutes. And then uh, you're basically rolling in money because then you got the uh, the viewer retention rate, right? Man, genius. And I get it, but I don't really want to do that. I mean, like I said, I'm lazy, a. But b, I actually really like doing the commentary and doing the longer winded shit. So it kind of goes against my style, which is unfortunate. <laughs> because if I wanted infinite money, nah. Again, I'm not related for the money, but. That is, that is kind of like my, my thought process when seeing other types of people do their thing, right? Hey, pitch dark. I'm like, I get it. I get the, the heavily edited stuff, but I like the unedited shit because it's fun. And I get to talk about the game. It's like doing a little mini 30 minute podcast every single time, right? Kick. But I think also with the unedited stuff, like, okay, so like I use OBS to do this shit, right? So it makes it so much easier for me to get videos out having to do this. Like I'm able to get those three videos out, no problem. Back in the day, dude, like back in the Halo Reach times when I was playing that game on the channel, even though they were 15 minute videos, my computer was so bad that it would take like an hour to two hours just to render out a 720p video. Nowadays I can do like 4K, 30 minutes and like, however long the video is, right? Do like one minute. One minute of rendering per one minute of video type thing. But I just like the unedited stuff. Like if I were to go on YouTube and like search up someone playing Silent Hill, I would probably want to watch Super Best Friends play Silent Hill and watch them throw that fire axe into the hole. I'd watch that a million times over. Oh, you piece of poo-poo. I hate you. I hate you more than anything. Anyway, <laughs> I apologize about rambling about this stuff, but it's the stuff I think about all the time. Like, if I want to become a super famous, very super famous YouTuber, it kind of goes against everything I like to do. So maybe doing these unedited Let's Plays is, is for me, the best thing to do anyway. And I'm curious what you guys think. Do you guys like the unedited stuff? Like, obviously, for this series, it's been edited. The audio is heavily edited every now and again uh, for the, the voice acting bits, because I have to do that, which I totally love. Audio is my favorite thing in videos, and I, and I love messing with it. Hence why I went all out on my audio setup. Uh, and ever since, I've been absolutely in love with my audio. <laughs> like, uh, audio is my favorite thing to, to F with. And I even like managed to get that automated because I'm lazy and I like to find the most efficient way to make videos sound good and look good and just feel good to enjoy. All right, uh, upgrade. Watch, I actually put like the sun in there and I'm like, oh god, that's gonna happen one of these times and be like not paying attention. It's happened in my live streams before, dude. When I live when I live streamed this game like five years ago, I straight up like put in uh one of my best floaters when i wasn't paying attention and we did like five floors and i wasn't paying attention to my chat at all and then <laughs> someone's like by the way i didn't want to say anything someone in the chat's like i, I didn't want to say anything but you kind of you put your weapon into the into your weapon i'm like oh fuck shit oh uh, it was bad it was bad it was good times all around though we have, uh, we have way too many items in our inventory, actually. Shit. For 205 years in the past. Oh, we're getting liches now. Oh, they're definitely resistant to fire, where diamonds don't appear to be. I think liches are weak to ice, perhaps. Or maybe no element, who knows. No, we don't have the key, not yet. He didn't even open a chest yet. Oh no! Osmond, your thirst. Your thirst is real, my friend. 
Holy crap, wait, what are, where are we getting these premium chickens from? We've been getting fat stacks of premium chickens. This is great though. This is actually really, really great. Oh man. Um, the reason for it is because the final boss is gonna be doing guaranteed damage to us, so the more premium chickens, the better. Oh, we're getting it from the freaking rashes. Which sounds really bad, but you know. I don't know where they found all the chicken, but hey, you know what? That's a big win for us. Now we don't have to go buy a bunch. All right, hold on. We got to go through the dungeon the proper way. Got to hug the right wall forever. Oh shit, he dropped something big. <laughs> what is it? Oh no, my bags. Damn it, too much chicken. What do we do? Well, I guess we can repair. Well, what we can actually do is go sell all this crap. Um, <laughs> probably the more logical thing to do, right? Uh, I think repair powder ought to do it. I think we can sell some of the, or sell, drop some of this. There we go, we'll go down to four repair powder. Freeze up a few spaces. Anti-goo amulet, you know, that ought to pay for it. Alright, Tone, don't let us down. Damn it. Well, that's not that bad. I, I call that the neutral, the neutral circle, right? Beneath your feet. The assassin. Assassin. Yes, the assassin, very important to the story. Remember that. Assassin. Very, very big, very important. And we're not gonna put any of our stuff into the, uh, the Georama parts just yet. But as you can see, so on the left here, we have all these different fragments of Seda. And we still have more to go. We have one, two, three, four more, like, plates to even do. And each of these uh, tapestries, I guess you could call them, or memories, uh, you would fill with these, uh, these memories, these ideas. Look at the wizard. That's, what a haunting face. It kind of reminds me of Sigma's face at the end of, like, Mega Man X5, when you have to fight it at the very beginning of the game. Bro, you, you drop revival powder? All right. That's a win. I really should have revival powder on my booty. You know what? It's probably a good idea. Let's forego the uh, the curse. Anti-curse. We don't need it. But now that we have the, uh, the revival powder up there, now we don't even have to worry about dying. <laughs> if we die, we just come right back to life. This is pretty much the optimal setup on the hot bar, I would say. At least if you feel relatively comfortable going around and not worrying if you get poisoned or whatever. Gosh, we've come such a long way in this playthrough. Remember when bats were a problem? On like the first five floors? Because you didn't have that much to deal with them? And you're a melee, you're a stinky melee character that can barely handle the bats? Ah, uh, the power trip that this game puts you on, though, is quite good. I'm curious to see how well our uh, 104 dungeon route will go once we finish up a few more games in the uh, level 5 category. I actually just picked up Rogue Galaxy because I've decided that we're going to do that after Dark Cloud 2. That's definitely a game I've been wanting to check out, but it'll be very much like a blind playthrough, but I don't really care about spoilers in that game, really, because it's so old, I just want to get through it. I want to beat it. It's a spiritual successor, people call it, to the Dark Cloud series. Which is kind of weird that it would be a spiritual successor. Considering they could have just made Dark Cloud 3, but I think Dark Cloud as an IP is owned by Sony Computer Entertainment. So, as far as I understand it, Level 5 wants to make a Dark Cloud 3, but they just need Sony to say, hey, you guys need to make a new one. And I feel like if they were to make a new Dark Cloud, I think at this point, it's gonna be a reboot. I don't think they would make a Dark Cloud 3. The game is so old. Like, Dark Cloud 2 is so old. That I really... I just don't see it. I don't see it happening. Uh, as like a Dark Cloud 3. Because I just imagine at E3, they would be like, All right, Dark Cloud 3, and everyone's like, Wait, there was, there was two games before this one? <laughs> 
what? And then everyone would be like, oh man, now I have to play through the other games. And it's kind of, it's kind of weird because Dark Cloud is one of those... It's like Final Fantasy in a way, where each game is very different. They're very loosely tied together by names and design choices and um, visuals and stuff like that. Like the two moons exist in this game and also exist in the sequel. And of course you get the reference at the end of Dark Cloud. Like at the end of Dark Cloud 2, like post credits, you get a cute little nod to Dark Cloud 1. It's not really, I'm not trying to spoil it, but it's like, it's the same with this 104 dungeon. They just kind of threw something in to like, give a nod to the original game, but nothing in Dark Cloud 2 really is in Dark Cloud 1. Hell, they even have like a returning character, uh, Osman. I'm sorry, I know that's a spoiler too. Shit, I'm a, I'm a monster, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't handle it though. Like, Osman comes back in 2, and um, he's kind of like Sid in Final Fantasy. Like, you're always going to get that type of character, right? You're always going to get Sid, you're always going to get Biggs, you're always going to get Wedge. All that shit. Anyway, that's going to be wrapping it up for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I had an absolute blast in this one. This was a lot of fun to do. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well. All the random conversations about life being a Let's Player. Is that what I am? I guess so now. Considering I've only done Let's Plays for like the past two or three months, like going all out. But uh, I'm glad people are enjoying them. Uh, the channel is like growing again, which is really cool to see. It was very stagnant considering I was gone for so long and many periods of time. Uh, but thank you to everyone that's been sticking with the series and uh, enjoying them and commenting and helping out. You guys are the true heroes and I uh, absolutely appreciate it. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and you all take it easy. You wonderful devils, you. I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.